Hello from Pembrokeshire and an event that over the last 10 years has put this seaside town of Tenby on the map, the Long Course Weekend Wales. Every year in July, thousands come for three days of multi-sport and are welcomed with the best support in the world. There are swim, bike and run events for all, but it's the full long course weekend that has always attracted the toughest athletes in a battle of racing and recovery that lasts from Friday night all the way through to midday on Sunday. Well, once again, Tenby absolutely packed for the Friday night first stage. The long course athletes must complete a 2.4 mile swim off the North Beach to earn the first medal of the weekend. Then on Saturday comes the cycling, 112 miles with closed roads, castles and plenty of climbs on this stunning course in Pembrokeshire. Then two medals turn to three with Sunday's marathon, Tenby to Pembroke and back, more great scenery, more gruelling hills. The third medal is not the last. On Sunday afternoon, everyone who finishes the long course weekend gathers for the presentation ceremony and the coveted long course weekend medal. The concept of the event has proved successful here and is still growing with expansion across the world to Mallorca, the Netherlands and Australia's Jervis Bay. We like to dub this a little big race. Um, I think of something that all the athletes talk about as well is that whilst it is, in terms of volume, lots of people, 45,000 people coming down with the supporters, it's got a real small, cosy, intimate feel, um, very local feel. And that was really a part of the sort of magic we try to put into the event as well, which only comes from the community. Finishing the long course weekend requires a high level of training, but this is an event for all. Everybody's number one and wearing one at the long course weekend kinder when 750 youngsters are offered a gentle introduction to racing. For athletes not taking on the full long course weekend, every element has a variety of distance options, with standalone events for swimmers, cyclists and runners taking place in parallel, allowing men and women of all abilities to pick something that's right for them. Over the whole course of the weekend, there'll be 10,500 men and women in action. In this year's event, there's plenty to catch up with. Local heroes Stephen Rogers and Nicky Reese are the only athletes to have completed every edition so far, so they're aiming to complete a 10th long course weekend. From long course legends to rugby legends, we'll see the flying wing Shane Williams and the triathlon newcomer Gareth Thomas take on the course. Then on the last day, 122 athletes attempting a new world record on the roads of Pembrokeshire in the Wales Marathon. The elite event too is fascinating. Oliver Simon, perhaps the most successful athlete in the event's history, going for another win. And the legendary triathlete Lucy Gossage battles experienced competitors as she takes on the full event for the first time. It all kicks off here in Tenby with a whale swim and the first chance for the athletes to gain an advantage. They need to grab as many minutes as they can. The leader on Friday night rarely ends up taking the final prize by Sunday afternoon. A great sight here in Tenby as everybody contemplates the long weekend to come. Huge names to watch out for, including Jill Cliff. Three times she's finished in second place overall. Will it be fourth time lucky for the long course title? I've had some good races lately and um, I've sort of got my enthusiasm and confidence back a bit and yeah, I think probably as good a chance as ever. Well, perhaps the biggest threat to Jill's aspirations for a maiden title here in Tembe comes from Lucy Gossage. She's won triathlons all over the world. Never actually done the whole weekend here. Um, done the one in Mallorca and I think it's actually harder than doing an Ironman in one go. Um, yeah, it's a bit more stressful and doing the marathon the day after the bike is definitely, um, definitely a challenge. Well, Lucy is sure to be up for it this weekend and so too will the local star, Oliver Simon. He won the last of his four long course titles back in 2015 and he's desperate to make it five. 
if I put three solid days together, I know I should be up there amongst the best out there. It's just little injuries in the past have kind of stopped me running. A couple of events I haven't actually been able to finish the whole thing, but and others have been on the podium but not actually on the top step. So yeah, four out of ten. So I'd love a fifth. Be nice. Well, Oliver Simon will be really up for this, but watch out for Andrew Horsfall Turner. He's a former specialist swimmer and also Sarah Hempenstall should be looking to lead the women out of the water. And they are underway in near perfect conditions for a Friday night here in Tembe. Fantastic crowd support. What a way to start. Well, the swim in the long course weekend is two laps of a 1.2 mile loop. At the end of the first circuit, they run around Gosca Rock and start lap two. All long course weekend athletes, identifiable by their yellow swim caps, will be circumnavigating the course twice. But there are junior long course weekenders doing one lap. And it's Horsefall Turner, as expected, leading by example from the front. And still they pour into the water. Two and a half thousand entering across the two distances. 1.2 miles or 2.4 is no mean feat. And the town has really played ball. It is absolutely perfect conditions here. Horsefall Turner still leading at the front. Oliver Simon, the local hero, the four-time winner in that pack, looking good at the moment. I'm not too worried about if there's like really good swimmers that come down for the event, then you know they're always going to push the pace and be on tip top form and really go for it. I mean, there's a couple of guys I think that are going to really put in a couple of minutes to me in the swim, and then hopefully I'll catch them some of that back on the bike. Well, Horsefall Turner, the 24 year old, has competed here in Tembe before in the swim only events, but now he wants to call himself a long weekender. He's worked on his bike and his run, but this without doubt is his best discipline. And he is really taking it to the rest of them here. And just behind him in the water wearing the green hat is Jack Southam. He'll be peeling off at the end of the first lap. Horsefall Turner leading. For those taking on the 1.2 mile whale swim, the race ends here on North Beach after one lap. But for those taking on the 2.4 mile swim and all long course weekend athletes, it's time to charge through the crowds before diving back into the water for a second lap. Well, what a treat for the crowd now, this Australian exit running round Gosca Rock. And it's Andrew Horsefall Turner, as expected, leading and about to take the first individual title of the weekend is Jack Southam, who will turn to his left. A little glance over the shoulder from Horsefall Turner. He's only halfway through his swim. And he is now back into the water, safely ahead of Oliver Simon and the best of the rest. A great addition to this swim that the crowd get up close and personal with these world-class weekenders. There is Oliver Simon. He looks fairly relaxed. He's a huge man and he's been using those good levers to good effect. He'll be expecting to complete the swim in a little under 50 minutes, which is a wonderful effort, but it just won't be quite as quick as the swim specialist Horsefall Turner. Kieran John in the white swim cap. He's doing the two-lap event, but swim only, so we won't be seeing him over 112 miles on the bike tomorrow. And there's Lynn Hughes in third place. Good swimming by all these leading contenders. And Sarah Hempenstall, a slightly slower runner, but she's much quicker in the water and she's ahead of Lucy Gossage at the moment. Nice thumbs up for the camera. Saunters round, checks the goggles, and she's ready to go again. Rest of the Elite women exiting the water and Lucy Cossage, you can see what a good runner she is there. Already overtaking one or two before she gets back into the water. And she really is a fabulous cyclist and a very good marathon runner as well. 
Jill Cliff, the perennial runner-up here. Remember, three times she's finished in second place. It's a solid swim so far from her, rather than spectacular. Oliver Simon's not the only famous local face. Stephen Rogers, the first of our long course legends. He's done every single event alongside good friend Nicky Rees. On this course, they're just about inseparable. I don't do anything without Nicky. No, <laughs> no, it's our 10th. So yeah, you know, it's, it's a good race. It's, 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 it's a hard race, but um, yeah, you know, we do it because we enjoy it. Well, they make it sound simple, but both these local men started their association with triathlon via this event. Well-matched in ability, they're aiming to complete the weekend in around 12 hours. We'll definitely be doing probably the bike together and hopefully the run together. We know each other, we train together, so we know each other's pace. And uh, with the swim, you can lose each other in the swim because there's a lot of people in there at once. But yeah, hopefully we'll come together in the bike and we'll do the run together as well. Well, we'll hold them to that and we'll see if they manage it come the end of Sunday afternoon. Remember, two and a half thousand in the water. The course understandably getting busy. Long course weekenders picking their way through those taking part in the Wales Swim one lap event and two lap events. And the man who promised to deliver the knockout swim has absolutely performed to the peak of his abilities. Andrew Horse for Turner takes the lead in the long course weekend. I tried to do the whole weekend uh, last year. Uh, injury prevented me from carrying on. Um, so I just wanted to get to the start of my swimming for strength. Um, so a good swim today. Hopefully hit it hard tomorrow on the bike. And then day three is a mystery. So. 46-41 for Horse Paul Turner and inside 50 minutes for Oliver Simon despite a touch of cramp at the end of the race. First lap was lovely, like got nice pack and hang, hung on there and I felt really good but second lap it just uh, cramping all the way back in. It's like both legs just kept on going so I was happy where I was and I'm not sure where everyone else is. A modest assessment of his performance, and Lynn Hughes came across the line fired up in third. That's third place for you on the 2.4 mile swim. Wow, uh, yeah, pretty happy with that then. Confirmation of that excellent swim from Horse Paul Turner. Oliver Simon just over three minutes adrift, Lynn Hughes within four of the early leader. Sarah Hempenstall has produced a great swim in the women's event, coming home inside 55 minutes. Your first woman through. As far as I'm aware, I've not seen any of the ladies. Woo! Is that a surprise? Yes. I was aiming top ten. That's my brilliant. That's already a candidate for reaction of the weekend. And look at Lucy Gossage tearing through the field towards the finish line. She's around about seven minutes down on Hempenstall, but she's a fine cyclist and runner. And that's a good effort in the water just outside the hour. Confirmation of the one, two, three, Hempenstall, Gossage and Munton, Jill Cliff down in eight, but within 10 minutes of the overall leader. <laughs> Stephen Rogers coming up towards the line, just inside 120, looked fairly solid. I was hoping for a better swim, but uh... It's fine, it's a finish, it's a medal. On to the next one, on to the bike. Well, they said they might lose each other in the water, but Nicky Reese was only 52 seconds behind. A lot more people than I thought, uh, but very, very good, very good, very enjoyable. And it's the amount of people in the swim that makes it that more exhilarating. A brilliant start to this festival of endurance. I wanted to beat my time from last year and I've just done it in three minutes, so that's amazing. Yeah, so hopefully, 
hopefully they can do the same on the bike. I'm gonna try and smash my bike time from last year. I've done um, long course Mallorca, I've not done this one. This is something else. Does the crowd support make a big difference? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you wouldn't get round without it. Even when you're out on the swim, you can hear it. It's fantastic. is now over for the 112 mile bike ride. Long, tough and tactical is just a few hours away. Welcome back to Tenby for Long Course Weekend Wales. The competitors are up early, ready for the start of stage two, the Wales Sportive. With some tough riding ahead, but closed roads, camaraderie and street parties in the towns and villages that line a spectacular route, it should prove to be an interesting day for all out on the roads of Pembrokeshire. 4,000 cyclists in total getting ready for this journey and those doing the full long course weekend, including rugby legend Gareth Thomas, tackling 112 miles. I want to experience it all. Like, I don't want to have my head down and be working too hard that I don't get to see the crowds, I don't get to feel the atmosphere. While well, starting in one of the many waves, he is sure to have an opportunity to savour the course and the atmosphere. Some competitors, including the ever-present legends Reese and Rogers, are the first to enjoy the ramp start. Nicky Reese is first to go. The look of trepidation turns into a fist pump. What a way to begin. The top 10 from the swim will start at minute intervals in reverse order, therefore the overall leader starts last. In the case of the elite women's race, that will be Sarah Hempenstall, but watch out for Lucy Gossage. She's seven minutes down, but loves the bike course. Looking forward to it. I know the race quite well. Um, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying to work out how many times I've ridden this course, quite a lot. I always like riding my bike, particularly around here when it's so beautiful. Well, Lucy Gossage clearly in the mood here this morning, enjoying the reception from the crowd. This is going to need to be a good ride from Hempenstall. Lived and bred here, so um, lots of support. I'm literally going cycling past my parents' house, cycling past through, through my town, um, and I love it. Should be quite an emotional day for you then. It will, just to finish, and that's what I'm looking forward to. A roar as she sets off. And what will the reaction be from Jordan Skelly? Definitely one to watch out for on the bike. He's ninth after a solid swim, but could be amongst the very best riders out on the streets here today. Oliver Simon, remember, aiming for a fifth long course title here in Tenby. He begins with a three minute deficit on our overall leader, wearing number one. He hopes to be number one come the very end of competition but he'll hope to go better than he did on the roads here 12 months ago when his aspirations of victory came crashing to the ground. I want to come through Tembe and be able to go out and be comfortable that I can manage the last 40 mile and, uh, yeah, no mishaps like last year and hopefully we'll get uh, to the finish line in a decent time. Andrew Horsfall turner last off the ramp, his first year in triathlon, perhaps not as confident as others on the bike. I'm not sure I know all the, the corners and turns, so be a bit cautious, get out there, push some uh, good power on the bike and just see where I get to at the end of the day. A great response from the rest of the riders waiting to tackle the roads in Pembrokeshire. Jordan Skelly in the top ten after the swim, a very good rider, going comfortably here in the early stages. There's Oliver Simon, everyone's out on the road, ready for him to catch, and he's doing well. He's gone past Joseph Tucker there, sweeping past him on the outside. Eyes down, focus on the road ahead. Remember, he hasn't won this title since 2015. Lucy Gossage, such a good rider. Yes, she lost a couple of minutes to Hempenstall in the water, but she's more than making up for that time deficit here on the bike. Oliver Simon, 
now going past Stephen Mott and Mott just up out of the saddle a huge number of climbs on this course and tucking in for a bit of drafting behind the charismatic Welshman hoping to go for five titles here on the course he knows so well well these two are fairly familiar with the roads and hills around here Reese and Rogers once again combining to make a wonderful double act in Tembi. Yeah, two special lads, good athletes, uh, good fun as well, but also very insp inspirational to other people that will stop, help out, talk to them, run with them, ride with them, whatever it may be. Well, it's clearly a partnership that's thriving. A thumbs up there from Nicky. They're both looking good. Matt, myself and uh, Nicky, we used to train together all the time. We just started running marathons. And then um, we decided that we were going to buy a bike. So we thought, right, we'll start cycling. So we'd done some sportifs. And then uh, Matthew Evans entered me into my first sprint triathlon. And I swear, that 750 meter swim is the hardest I've ever done. And swore that the next time I do it, I would train and get a proper wetsuit. So um, yeah, it's just gone from there, really. Well, these two have witnessed every stage of the event's growth here in Wales. Year one, uh, there was 34 people doing the long course, which is the three events, uh, and the fourth medal at the end. Uh, and I think only, I think it was 14 finished, but now he sort of caps it off at a thousand athletes, um, obviously doing the long course event. Well, these two have managed to catch up with Jill Cliff at Castle Martin, 16 miles in, tucking in behind the woman hoping to upgrade to first place. Well, as the two jokers plot their course here, the last laugh may be going on behind them because look at Oliver Simon storming past. Stephen Mott still slipstreaming the four-time winner. So Reese and Rogers back with Cliff. Simon really pouring it on here. And so too is Jordan Skelly. Ninth place after the swim. He's certainly not in ninth now on the strength of this ride. Four thousand cyclists in total, taking on board various climbs, including Freshwater West, burning the miles and the calories, and enjoying every second of the ride. Well, enjoyment was the key factor for Gareth Thomas. Let's hope he's really taking time to savour the atmosphere here out on the roads of Pembrokeshire. Good, because uh, we pushed there yesterday for the swim. My first ever swim, and today we do a nice casual 112 miles on the bike, if that's possible. Well, I think that's still a smile instead of a grimace. Thomas with a long way to go, as with many of the rest. Lucy Gossage glancing up ahead of her, and she sees Jill Cliff in her sights. Gossage started the day some way adrift of our swim specialist Sarah Hempenstall, but this is a fine, fine ride from a winner of multiple triathlons around the world. Nice smile there from Jill. Lucy Gossage definitely on the hunt for a number one finish on this bike ride. Full-time oncologist and a wonderful racer, getting a salute from one or two of the other sportive riders. She's in a class of her own. Oliver Simon's going well, with only one rider left to catch. Hey, one boy up front, he's quite handy on the bike. And obviously one far, too far behind on the swim, because he went off the ramp. And then, I don't know what's going on behind me, to be honest. So I'm just got a solo time trial it today and see where we end up. Well, the cyclist up ahead of Oliver Simon is Jordan Skelly, who started the day ninth after the swim. And what a disappointment from Skelly's perspective. It seems he's got some mechanical issues with his bike, possibly the chain. He's losing valuable seconds here as Oliver Simon appears in the blue gloves just over the brow of that hill. Now, he's just about getting going again here, but this is a massive disappointment for Skelly. He really was beginning to motor. He still looks a little uncomfortable there with the bike. From a neutral's point of view, we'll be hoping that he sorts out these issues and makes a good race of it. 
But Simon now coming up onto his shoulder. Skelly just has a glance over. And he's got to put this behind him and hope that the bike is working properly again. Oliver Simon will look to take full advantage here, coming past Kerou Castle, 46 miles in to a 112-mile bike ride. And he's pulling away from Skelly here. Remember, Oliver Simon hoping to win this title back for the first time since 2015. It's pretty quick, isn't it? <laughs> a nice sporting acknowledgement of the talent up ahead of him there from Skelly. Meanwhile, all the rest unaware of the dramas out front, just enjoying the journey and this great festival of cycling. The town centre of Tenby really is the hub of Long Course Weekend Wales. And in about 24 hours, the crowds will welcome home this year's champions. But before then, there's still the 112 mile bike ride to be settled. Oliver Simon looking really good here. Well into the second half of the ride, coming past some of the 4,000 out on the course. 108 miles up St Bride's Hill. And look at the way he's coming out of the saddle. Superb level of fitness from him and all the rest taking on this course, being cheered on up all these tough inclines. He'll be really pleased with how this bike has gone because he's moved ahead of Andrew Horsfall Turner. Although part of Turner's lost time has come from a crash. Descending, a bit too quick, great top up, hit the curb, bashing through, hit my, hit my back, cut myself a little bit, but a couple of minutes, shake down and go again. Uh, what a brave attitude from Horsfall Turner. He said he was on a bit of a learning curve when it comes to the biking and the running, but he still should have a reasonable chance come the run. Just taking a drink there, fourth from the left-hand side is Gareth Petz in the red top. Arguably the fastest runner on paper left in the long course weekend. Could he give Oliver Simon some problems? Hard work, we've got some good company today. Boys doing really well. So what's your strategy? Stick with them as long as I can. Try to pull the gap back to Ollie, but he's a strong rider. He knows the course, so we'll see how he goes. Confident words and a good approach there from Pets. We'll watch the run specialist closely when it comes to the marathon. The Samba Dock band are still roaring their encouragement and Lucy Gossage is still out of the saddle. What a ride this has been from the elite women's leader. And not a bad effort from the flying winger Shane Williams. A little quicker than his former teammate Gareth Thomas. Williams is quite an experienced triathlete and he's looking good up St Bride's Hill. Nicky Reese, another one out of the saddle. He's in Saundersfoot and he's pulled ahead of good friend Stephen Rogers. <laughs> Oliver Simon coming home here at the end of this bike ride. And it's been a successful one for the four-time champion. He's given himself a superb platform come the marathon. 112 miles covered in five hours, 12 minutes. Quite some ride. Stayed safe, out of trouble, and was happy. It was a bit faster than it usually is, so the course is obviously a bit quicker. Pretty much soloed it all the way. Usually I end up like 50 miles by myself, but not the whole 112. Like So, yeah, I'm happy I pushed on through and held on. Jordan Skelly coming up to the line. A good ride from him that would have been faster, but for those mechanical issues. Coming home just outside five and a half hours. Andrew Horsfall Turner was leading after the swim. That's no longer the case, but remember, he picked himself up after a crash. Are you feeling positive for the marathon tomorrow? Yeah, I think I just got to go away, reassess what I've done, because I, I, I took a big hit to my hip, um, which I can feel now. So um, hopefully all being good, then 
Give it a go to Mario. Well, if horse Paul Turner does take his place in the starting lineup for the marathon, he'll have to claw back nine and a half minutes on Oliver Simon. Skelly in fifth, and the big threat to Simon is Gareth Petz in seventh, but he is 29 minutes adrift. This has been a stunning ride from Lucy Gossage, it really has. She had plenty of time to make up after the swim, and she's coming home here just outside five and a half hours. What a performance. Well, I've never done the marathon here, and I know the, the half is super tough, so God knows what the marathon's like. <laughs> well, it's a very hilly course. How does that work with you? I, I quite like the hills. Um, yeah, I've, I've actually already done two running races this week, so I'm a little bit concerned about my legs. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> a great ride from Lucy Gossage, a solid effort from Jill Clip on the bike for more than six hours. How is the body feeling now after two events? Um, feels OK, but I can't imagine doing a marathon tomorrow. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess I might feel OK by the morning. Well, Jill Cliff is fourth overall, more than 40 minutes down on Lucy Gossage. It's Starmer and Duxbury who have the ominous task of trying to claw back the lead from a woman who looks unstoppable. And speaking of an unstoppable force, what about the man going for ten in a row, Nicky Rees? Close roads were amazing. You could just let yourself go and it was super fast. Well, Rogers was quicker than his good friend in the swim. He's a couple of minutes down though on the bike ride. Safely home though, as are the best of the rest. It really is a carnival atmosphere. Not just a 112 mile ride, a 72 miler and a 40 mile introduction. A great day for the Wales Sportive and good to see they're still smiling at the finish line. Well, Shane Williams has delivered some superb moments for Welsh sports. How did he enjoy that ride? The bike ride is never easy and uh... You get to about 60 miles, you think you're doing all right, and then it takes its toll. I hope that's for everyone. And are you looking forward to the marathon tomorrow? Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. at this point, after, after a ride like that, you're never looking forward, well, I look forward to bed, really, but, uh, you know, by the morning, I'll be fine, and uh, if it's as enjoyable as last year, I can't wait. A fine ride in six hours and two minutes for Shane Williams. Gareth Thomas, about an hour and 20 behind, but a good effort for a newcomer to the sport of triathlon. So two medals down, two to go for the long course weekenders. It's amazing, it's brilliant. I did it last year, I love the event, it's fantastic. Exciting, it's brilliant, and the atmosphere is just awesome. Really fantastic. And still they pour across the finish line to great cheers, just the marathon to come. Hello from Tembi and the 10th edition of Long Course Weekend Wales. It's the final day of competition with the Wales Marathon, a 26.2 mile run to Pembroke and back, deciding who will be the latest heroes in this iconic competition. 4,000 runners in total here on day three, and as well as those tackling 26.2 miles, we've got a half marathon starting at Pembroke Castle, a 10K at Manabir Castle, and a 5K here in Tembe just before the start of the marathon. This really is a day with something for everyone of all ages. But it's the marathon on the minds of the long course weekenders, and with no Andrew Horsfall Turner in the starting lineup after his bike crash, it's a handsome lead for Oliver Simon. I mean, that's a nice cushion. Uh, years gone by, I'd have been um, over the moon with that and uh, not worried about the marathon at all. But obviously, on a marathon, you can kind of, uh, if things go wrong, later on in the day then uh, and you start walking 10 minutes can go quite quickly so i'm still gonna pace myself but that's a lovely cushion to have 29 minutes is a sizable advantage over gareth pets but he might just need it the run specialist looks up for it today i'm gonna give it everything that i have and, and try and get as close to uh, as close to the podium as close to ollie as i can and, and see what happens 
As far as the elite women's race is concerned, surely it is Lucy Gossage's to lose. She's 23 minutes up on Duxbury and Starmer. I really hate my... I, I can run control and not get carried away because I, I kicked myself if I got injured, so I just want to keep my ego in check and just run safely. <laughs> No ego where Stephen Rogers and Nikki Rees are concerned. They're 26.2 miles away from a tenth successful completion of a long course weekend in Wales. Remember, this is the start of a long day for all sorts of runners. The half marathon and 10K participants yet to join this melee. At the moment, it's all about the marathon and the long course weekenders. Joe Beach taking the early lead. He's focused all his energies on the marathon this weekend, so he's not taking part in the long course weekend battle for overall supremacy. And amongst those very much enjoying the reception of the crowd here in Tembe are a group attempting a world record for the most athletes completing a marathon tied together, 122 of them, and they're raising money for Cancer Research Wales. We're all tied around the waist. Uh, we've got a carabiner cliff and belt around our waist with 1.5 metres to the person next to you. We're going to run in rows of four and 30 deep. Um, and the rope will S between the whole party. The group of runners that you have, are they all marathon runners? Do you have some newbies in there? Uh, there's a real mixed bag, actually. We've got one gentleman who this will be his 100th marathon today. Uh, we've got others, like myself, first marathon. But ultimately, the cause and obviously the Guinness World Record is going to get them over the line. Well, Sophia Greenacre from Guinness World of Records is here to make sure the record attempt is in line with the all-important rules. One of our main guidelines is that all the runners who start the marathon have to complete it. Today there's 122 runners and if one of them drops out, it's a disqualified attempt. Have you seen this record attempted before? I've adjudicated several marathon records, but this is the first one where it's a team attempting together. It's really exciting. The record they're trying to break was set two years ago in Canada with 112 runners. Have you done much training tied together? Uh, only once <laughs> with this man here. <laughs> so just the two of you? Yeah, and we ended up, uh, he went left of a bollard, I went right and it didn't go very well. So uh, we'll see what it's like. Fingers crossed for a new world record and fingers crossed for a first female completing the long course weekend here in under 10 hours. Lucy Gossage, judging by her conversations at the moment, looking comfortable and well on course. Remember, she started the marathon with a 23-minute lead over Rebecca Duxbury, having to work hard here in the early stages, the Oxford triathlete. And Oliver Simon, all smiles. Well, he is the local favourite. Everybody would love to see him secure his first title here since 2015. Stephen Rogers getting a nice ripple of applause from the Tembi Aces Cycling Club. A wry smile on his face. He's decided not to wait for good friend Nicky Rees. I think he's going for gold. I reckon mile 15, 16, and I'll catch him. Upstairs for thinking, downstairs for dancing. The mind boggles about Nicky Reese's potential on a dance floor. Meanwhile, Joe Beach, clear leader in the Wales Marathon, because remember, there's an individual title on the line here, as well as the long course weekend title. Gareth Petz is the run specialist. He has to find 29 minutes to close the gap on Oliver Simon. Of course, suits me. Um, and being a little bit shorter on stature and um, the climbs and for sure the descents um, are going to work with me as well having no fear on those downhill sections especially coming back in on mile 25 that's where we can really get some time on people um, as well confident words there from gareth Petz, and a confident look on the face of lucy gossage still looking really comfortable here there's duxbury just behind and in the distance in the orange strip is Jill Cliff. Pembroke Castle marks halfway for the marathon runners, and that, rather appropriately, is the starting point for those taking part specifically in the half marathon. They form an appreciative guard of honour for the marathon runners as they come through. The carnival continues here on the streets of Pembrokeshire. And what a mark of respect for Lucy Gossage and a high five for Nikki Reese from a rather butch looking unicorn. 
And those looking for individual glory in the half marathon are on the course and on the long road back to Tembe. Let's hope they're looking as happy at the finish line as they are at the start. Well, the distinctive loping stride of Oliver Simon is well past the castle. And at the moment, he is on course for title number five. But he needs to keep this going. Lucy Gossage at Manabir. Six miles to go. She's making good use of the downhill sections. And she'll need to show all her strength for the pretty big climb back up the other side. This is definitely a hill on which to grit your teeth, get your eyes down and think about the finish line. Meanwhile, the 10K runners giving good applause before the start of their own journey back to Tembe. They let the leading marathon men and women come through first. And then they too join this festival of distance running on slightly fresher legs, it has to be said. Well, the going's getting tough for the would-be world record holders, but spirits are still high. There's quite a few hills, but we're going to get there. We're going to finish, and we're going to finish as a team. Great bunch of people, a lot of teamwork, looking out for each other. Um, really enjoying it. Good morale, good singing, some bad, um, but all good. Loving it! Loving it! Well, let's hope they still are at the finish line. Some way to go for the 122 of them still attached and very firmly together. Meanwhile, Joe Beach is getting a brilliant reception here back in Tenby. He's going to take the Wales Marathon title for 2019. All smiles. He's run around about 2.36, which in old fashioned timing is six minute miling. That's a brilliant performance on such a hilly course. And the diminutive, powerful figure of Gareth Petz coming home around about two hours 50. It's a brilliant run. Is it going to be good enough to close down the 29 minute advantage that Oliver Simon had at the beginning of this race? A salute to the crowd and a salute to you, Gareth Petz. Great run. That was the hardest in the four that I've done, without a doubt. I went out with a plan, tried to hold on to it. It was tough. It was a great effort from Gareth Petz, but it is not going to be enough because Oliver Simon is delivering once again here in Tembe, just as he did on the inaugural long course weekend back in 2010. Under 50 minutes in the water, a superb five hours 12 yesterday, and he's rounded off with a sub three hour marathon, and he is the king once again on his own patch. What a win, and what a way to do it. It feels really good. It's taken a long time to get it back. I uh, lost it like when I was very fit the first time to Marcus, and uh, yeah, it's taken a bit of a long road to get back and uh, be on top podium. A richly deserved victory for Oliver Simon. Jordan Skelly, an excellent runner-up finish from him. Gareth Petz on the podium, 20 minutes behind the main man, Oliver Simon. Well, it was only ever surely going to be a first place finish for Lucy Gossage, but what about the time? Yes, she's done it. The first female in long course Wales history to complete all three brutal disciplines inside 10 hours, and she's still smiling. I just love Timmy so much, and yeah, it was amazing. It's, it's obviously it's my favourite place, and the crowds are amazing, and um, yeah, it was good to be back out there. <laughs> Rebecca Duxbury had the tough, tough task of trying to claw back that lead of Lucy Gossage. It's a fine run from her, three and a quarter hours, second place overall. Gossage from Duxbury, Jill Cliff, three times a silver medalist, has to settle for bronze this time. The crowds are amazing. All the way around, there's little groups of people outside the houses and they're offering water and things. And... Yeah, they're just brilliant. And then you come back into Tembe and it's just absolutely amazing. Well, he said it was downstairs for dancing, but Nicky Reese has found some magic, which ensures he and good friend Stephen Rogers make it 10 in a row, side by side. 
surely they're certs to start next year's, aren't they? Guys, 10 long course weekends and you crush the finish line together. together. Yeah, very good. Steve went off, uh, I thought, a little bit fast, but he paced it very well. Oh, I didn't stop my watch. I thought, oh, me. <laughs> I thought he was going to split it and very good well done to him. But I managed to wind him in and a uh, bit of tortoise in here, I think. But yeah, managed to get it in there. I could hear him behind me. I could hear him. Well, with marathon runners, half marathon runners and 10K finishers still to cross the line, there are hundreds making their way back into Tenby for this finish line guard of honour. It's my first marathon today, so it's a real experience and uh, quite hard going, but I'm just so happy that I finished now. The marathon course is amazing, just such good views and just really kind of keeps your mind occupied while you're running, so absolutely fantastic. The crowd at 25 miles thinking, I've done it! I'm, I've done it! I've absolutely done it! So, yeah, so yeah, brilliant. There's a lot of people from our child club here this weekend and kind of just all together, all the different abilities, we all put ourselves up for it and yeah, it's a great atmosphere, especially here in Tembe, it's unreal. Ah, it was incredible. The support is fantastic. It was amazing. The surroundings are spectacular. The scenery is superb. And it's just an overall fantastic three days. Absolutely brilliant. And there's surely no better way to finish the event than with a world record. Those raising money for Cancer Research Wales have done it. All 122 of them. It's a brand new Guinness World Record title. How does it feel to be part of a Guinness World Record? Truly incredible, amazing. You know, the guys, they've all got their own stories why they're running this today, but they've all got a certificate to put up on their walls this evening with their name on it, saying they're Guinness World Record holders. So, yeah, truly incredible feeling. Wales Marathon medals for all the finishers. And for the long course weekenders, there is one last, thankfully short, walk of glory to collect their fourth medal which means they have done all three events, and in some cases, very quickly indeed. Jill Cliff was third in the elite women's race, then came Rebecca Duxbury, and nobody was to deny Lucy Gossage, who here looks like she's ready to do another marathon. She's come out on top in her first full running of the event. Gareth Petz ran a fine marathon, but it was destined to be third place for him. Jordan Skelly was second, which means all eyes are on the local hero who has done it. Oliver Simon, with his first crown in four years, becomes a five-time winner of this event. A special accolade, a great trophy, and a fitting climax for his years of effort. And speaking of years, 80 medals across a decade between them, and they've gone and got matching tattoos to commemorate the occasion. Rogers and Reese will be back, and so too will Oliver Simon and Lucy Gossage. Three days, three disciplines, one thoroughly absorbing long course weekend. Well, that's 10 years of long course weekend, a great anniversary for an event that looks set to go on and on. And from Tembe, it's goodbye.